let's talk about the Fowler's position. So there are about four of them, and the name of these positions comes from a surgeon. So with these positions, it's all about the angle of the head of the bed. So make sure you're paying attention to those angles because that's where you're gonna be tested at. So with this, your patient is going to be in the bed, they're gonna be lying on their back and their knees can be flexed or extended. And again, what we're paying attention to is the head of the bed, that angle. So first we have low Fowler's and with low Fowler's that head of the bed is about 15 to 30 degrees. So it's almost supine, but they have a little slight elevation to it. Then we have semi Fowler's and semi Fowler's is higher than low Fowler's. Low Fowler's is the lowest of all of them. But with semi, the head of the bed is at an angle of 30 to 45 degrees. Now it's important to note that some sources will actually just group low Fowler's and semi Fowler's together and just say semi Fowler's ahead of the bed at 30, up to 30 degrees. So just keep that in mind while you're studying. Now these positions are used for sleeping, especially they're beneficial for patients who have breathing problems like heart failure because there's so much fluid backing up, putting pressure on the heart and the lung. It actually makes it easier for the patient to breathe at an angle when they're resting. It can also be beneficial during that post-op period to prevent upper body swelling if surgery was, let's say, on the neck. It helps decrease the swelling. And when we're talking about that 30 degree position, we want a patient at at least 30 degrees if they have increased intracranial pressure because this head of the bed elevation is going to help decrease that intracranial pressure and maintain perfusion to the brain. And then when we're talking about the 30 to 45 degree angle, it's beneficial in patients who are getting GI feedings, those enteral feedings because it can help prevent aspiration. So, you know, sometimes there's a sign on the bed or you have these protocols that say if a patient is getting a tube feeding, their head of the bed cannot go any lower than like 30 or 45 degrees. Plus, if the patient needs suctioning, this is a good position. And if they're a critical care patient because they're at risk for aspiration and we wanna prevent ventilator associated pneumonia. And problems associated with these Fowler positions would be pressure injuries, like pressure injuries to the sacral area, the coccyx area, shoulder, spine, and heels. And the next we have the Fowler's position. And with this, it's just called Fowler's position. There's no low, semi, or high in front of it. And this is where the patient's head of the bed is between 45 to 60 degrees. So they're resting on their back. Their knees could be flexed or extended. So it's a lot like low and semi Fowler's, but the head of the bed is just a little bit higher. And this position is used for many of the same things that low and semi Fowler's was used for, like eating and drinking and easing breathing with certain respiratory problems. Plus the problems associated with this position are the same as what it was for low and semi. And then lastly, we have high Fowler's position. And this is the highest position of all the Fowler's positions with that head of the bed being at about a 60 to 90 degree angle. So the patient is setting straight up in the bed as you can see here. Now with this position, it has the same usages as the other Fowler's positions, but it's very helpful for nasogastric tube insertion and if your patient is experiencing autonomic dysreflexia. Now this only happens in patients who have a spinal cord injury at T6 or higher. And when a patient is experiencing this condition, you wanna put them up at 90 degrees because this is going to drop their blood pressure. And if you forgot what autonomic dysreflexia is, I have a whole comprehensive review that can help you review this. Now with this position, there's a risk for pressure injuries because you have your patient setting straight up in bed. So there's a lot of pressure being placed on that bottom. So there's a risk of pressure injuries to that sacral and coccyx area, the shoulders, the spine, and the heels. Okay, so that wraps up this video. And don't forget to check out the other videos in this series.